Hey guys, uh, my name is Sean. You will likely recognize me as the second half of Vapotron. However, we're doing a little bit of rebranding. We haven't quite decided in what order different videos are going to go up yet. There might be a video on the channel already explaining this. However, we're going likely with the name Tron Media, and I'll just briefly explain that basically we're kind of branching out. The whole vapor thing, um, some people put in some false claims that we were using things other than just nicotine, which got things banned without anyone ever bothering to check. Thanks, YouTube. But in the meantime, we're branching out into other areas. There will likely be vapor videos coming back later soon, uh, but we haven't quite decided on that part of things yet. You're going to see me doing some things like what we're doing here today, which is cooking on a budget. You're also going to see Trevor doing some things uh, tech-related, and likely some other topics as well. Pretty much at this point we're playing it by ear, trying to kind of find our new niche, for lack of a better term. So basically, like I said, mm -hmm. this is our first video, or my first video. Trevor's behind the camera for this one. And uh, we're going to be making meatballs that I'll be serving later for Trevor and I to, to eat. Uh, with, well, spaghetti and meatballs. So, first thing that I do want to point out, you may notice, brand. A lot of people have the ridiculous idea that you need to have the highest quality brand of this and that. First thing uh, you're going to see, great value. These were literally pepper, garlic, oregano bought at the dollar store. Uh, this one, of course, great value. I mean, well, everyone knows where these two came from. Uh, Eggs, I can't quite remember, but, you know, we're not going out and buying the most expensive. We're just making sure it's a decent quality. And I can tell you this, most of you probably know from the shape of the bottle, what brand this is meant to duplicate. Uh, we actually find this one slightly better than the brand it's meant to duplicate. Uh, a little bit less salty, and of course, if you do like it a bit saltier, well, just add some salt. The ground beef I'm going to show you is another thing you may notice is... Uh, a little different packaging. Uh, one way to save money on your ingredients is to go out, now I've thought this, of course, but to go out get those uh, big value family packs and uh, basically that way you can just divide it up and I can literally say, for example, uh, let's say if it had to be 2.37 kilograms. Alexa, how many pounds is 2.37 kilograms? 2.37 kilograms is 5 pounds, 4 ounces. So if I had a one that size, then I'd divide it to approximately 5 bags, as equal as I can, and then I've got about a pound in each bag. And that's it. You know what you're doing. So the first thing, of course, anytime you're cooking, is to wash up. Now, I'm going to be taking a bit of an extra precaution. I used to work at a McDonald's, and uh, while there, I learned some uh, food safety habits, and the way I see it, if I'm going to take those kind of steps for food safety for a bunch of strangers, I'm certainly going to be at least that cautious when cooking for myself and people I care about. So I'm going to actually, because I'm going to be digging my hands into the ground beef in a few minutes, uh, before I do that I've got gloves there ready to put on. The gloves I'm going to be using, <clears throat> I literally bought them at Dollar Store. Uh, they were 50 gloves for like about 25, which comes to about two and a half cents per glove, about five cents a pair. So I mean, you know, even if you do, like myself, want to go a little bit overboard in terms of food safety and uh, go so far as to wear gloves when dipping your hands right into ingredients, and you can still do it on a budget. It's probably a little bit wasteful on our budget to be doing this, but it's something, it's really not something that's going to break us. So, first things first. Now, a lot of people will put these on top of the ground beef, but I find it's a lot simpler to have these already in there, plus then if the eggs have to be spoiled, I haven't spoiled the ground beef. I just toss it out and uh, throw away or toss it out, wash out the bowl, grab a couple more eggs, and start over. And no, in all fairness, that's never actually happened to me. It's just, I tend to be a little extra cautious. Hence the gloves. I should have brought the garbage can over here. 
So we're going to be tossing all of this in here, of course. Our lovely medium, if I remember correctly, ground beef that we purchased. Yes, at Walmart. And pretty basic seasonings. Nothing overly complicated. Of course, almost everyone's standby. Oh, geez, that's a lot. <laughs> Trevor, there are going to be a little more pepper than usual. That's fine. A little salt. I've actually got this refilled with sea salt, by the way. If you're wondering why it's so coarse. A little oregano. This I want a lot of because I love the flavor of oregano. It certainly smells good already. It's not even cooking yet. <laughs> and then a little garlic, of course. And a lot of people will use, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, crushed red pepper or maybe a little bit of uh, chili powder. This will have mm. just as nice an effect and in all honesty will suit our personal tastes a little bit better than either of those options. I'm going to pop that back in the fridge because it is refrigerated after opening. This I actually bought today. Uh, you can get bags of uh, breadcrumbs at most grocery stores. They're usually used for stuffing. I find the seasoned breadcrumbs are better for this type of uh, this type of recipe, they just give you a better flavor, and frankly, if you don't care about the brand, they're just as cheap as what comes in the bags. Another good thing about breadcrumbs in your meatballs is the simple fact that meat is expensive. Frankly, even the way we buy it. Meat is not the cheapest thing to have. And, of course, well, not as expensive as some of those, uh, you know, vegetable based meats, of course, make up the fortune altogether. But still, not the cheapest thing in the world. And of course, having the filler makes it a lot simpler. Now, like I said, I dig my hands right in when I'm doing something like this. A lot of you may realize that it's very similar to if we were just making a uh, meatloaf or something like that. Pretty much the same concept, really. The only difference is instead of then combining it into a nice loaf pan or shaping it into a nice loaf pan or something like that, you roll it into ball, balls. And uh, most people will fry them up. I actually find it's a lot simpler making homemade meatballs to bake them. Hence the uh, parchment lined pan there. And uh, also in all honesty, to really fry your meatballs properly, you almost need a nonstick pan or a massive amount of oil. Neither of which seems like something you really want to be dealing with. Well, actually, I'd love to have nonstick pans, but I don't have a nonstick pan. And a massive amount of oil, frankly, I don't want my meatballs to be oily or any greasier than they're all going, already going to be from the ground beef. So I was going to bake them on a nonstick piece of parchment. <laughs> I said non I almost said nonstick pan there. I'm going to be basing, I'm baking them on, on a piece of parchment, and it will have pretty much the same effect as if it was a nonstick pan. That's the whole point of parchment in baking. Anyone who bakes any amount of cookies and cakes and uses parchment at all will tell you it is a wonderful thing to use if you just don't want what you're making to stick. Another thing we've learned, by the way, if you buy a nice cheap frozen pizza somewhere, and you don't have a pan big enough to put it on, uh, you can literally take a piece of uh, parchment and put it directly. That was literally a clump of seasoning, by the way, that I didn't mix it, but I tossed it to the sink. I'll clean that up after. But you can literally uh, take a piece of parchment, put it directly onto the oven rack, and just lay your uh, frozen pizza on that and bake it away, lift up the piece, edges of the parchment to lift it out, it works fantastically well. Parchment, if you can get it at a decent price at all, is an absolute must in any kitchen. Absolute must have. I cannot tell you, I wouldn't even be able to estimate how frequently 
I use this stuff. And of course, I happen to know someone with a Costco membership who gets it for me, and I just pay them back. So, you know, big in here. Not overly cheap per pack, but so much, or sorry, per purchase rather, but uh, so much cheaper than if you were buying it in smaller quantities. It's more than uh, worth the price. For what you're paying, for what you're Sorry, I'm shaking so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something I should mention. Uh, our previous videos, all the vapor related videos, the uh, camera was always, always on a tripod, except when we needed like a close up scum of something. And so it's this is a very different format than what either Trevor or myself is used to. Can't wait till it's my turn behind the camera. <laughs> if you think it's shaky now, <laughs> but yeah, when he's doing something tech related, it'll be my turn to be behind the camera and uh, basically follow the head heavy. around in terms of what he's doing. But yeah, pretty basic, easy. Toss these in the oven on 350. Uh, if you want them to be a little more browned than 400, but. Uh, almost everything these days. Just just ask anyone who does any amount of cooking what temperature they use most frequently on their oven. It's 350. Fair right. I should, being Canadian, I should know what that is in Celsius. Alexa, what is 350 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 350 degrees Fahrenheit is 176.7 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, kind of solid and so yeah, one, just say 175. One degree isn't going to make much of a difference. So yeah, about 175 or 350, depending on which way you want to look at it. I should be ashamed of myself. I'm a Canadian and I don't know what 350 Fahrenheit is in Celsius. As you may have guessed, we use, we, we got deals on smart devices. Every now and then we go on sale for Oh, half or less of what they are, and we just want them as a smart device. So we're only looking for like you know, anything like the uh, the Google Home Max or something like that. Um, just something basically that we could use as a smart device. They are a wonderful thing to have, especially in the kitchen when your hands are all full of whatever you're working with or. If you're working on anything, basically, you just don't have a free hand to take out your phone or go to a laptop or a tablet or computer, you know, just ask. Say whatever the uh, activation phrase is and just ask it. Hey, what is this? How do I that? So, yeah. And it just makes life a little bit easier. A little bit of a splurge on our part. Probably not something we really technically needed and did stretch our budget a bit. But, yeah, just makes things a lot easier. Like I said, especially in the kitchen. But yeah, so this is basically it. Just roll them up into balls. I imagine this part of the video is going to get bit boring. Some of this might end up on the uh, virtual cutting room floor. <laughs> After all, this is, uh, like I said, probably for those of you watching, this is probably a very boring part of the video. But then I kind of expected it to be watching someone roll balls between their hands. Well, in any of the videos that would be allowed on YouTube, watching someone roll balls in their hands is probably not that exciting. <laughs> Just uh, for future reference, by the way, if you're going to have your kids watching my videos, you might want to be prepared to explain some slightly inappropriate humor. <laughs> Demonetize, even though we're not monetized. <laughs> if we were going to get monetized, uh, we're beyond, be far beyond that point. Yeah. Right, I don't so. think we're anywhere near that. So it's 350. I should have had that heating while I was doing this. Uh, that's, you know, we're not always perfect. But I'm just going to be tossing it in there. 
for 350 and in a few minutes we will have some shots for you of them coming out of the oven. Uh, just approximately half hour, 45 minutes should be all it takes to bake those uh, at, of course, like I said, 350 and we'll be with you in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, Alexa just told us that the mm -hmm. stuff was ready. Oh, sorry. Ignore that. Uh, but our, uh, I'll go on to say the word, but uh, the Amazon device just told us, or let us know, when the timer went off. And we're about to take these out of the oven. <clears throat> now, these were a little bigger than they really needed to be. That's why I let them in the full half hour. If you were doing something a little bit smaller, of course, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, but that's the whole thing with homemade meatballs. You can make them, of course, as big or as small as you want them. And they come out just fine. So, the very observant amount, you may notice there's one less. I did take one out at about 25 minutes, and they seemed nearly done at that point. But when it comes to food safety, we tend to be very particular here. So, I decided to leave them in for the extra five minutes just to be absolutely certain that they were fine. As you can see, fully cooked inside and out and absolutely delicious based on the is it cooked yet tester I did earlier. Now this, by the way, is just a basic canned tomato pasta sauce. We actually used a mix of the uh, garlic and herb, and oh, what was the other one I used there? The tomato and basil. Great value, and just standard dry pasta. That's what, uh, this by the way, is what Trevor and I will be having for supper tonight. We're not wasting this, of course. So, just to give it a proper and fair taste test. that my little mishap with the pepper would kind of cause an issue with the flavor, but apparently it wasn't as much as I thought it was. So, if someone wants to just kind of blow on this. Mm. What do you think? Mm, good. Awesome. And there you have it. Think about homemade meatballs, like I said, you can make them as big or as small as you want. You can go with absolutely jumbo, oversized, ridiculously huge. Keep in mind, if you do that, of course, it's going to take a fair bit longer than half an hour to cook. Half an hour was all it took with these, of course, and uh, even that was probably five minutes longer than was absolutely needed. But again, with food safety, I tend to be extremely cautious. Just the uh, fast food training, believe it or not. I know people tend to rag on fast food places, but when policies are actually followed, they uh, are actually extremely strict on these things, and it's something uh, that I was actually a trainer. So, uh, needless to say, I was one of the ones who was well-versed in proper food safety. And I have always, ever since I really got put in it there, taken those food safety procedures, taken them into my home, and been extremely cautious about what I'm feeding to myself and the people I care about. Um, it's always a good idea to, uh, to do just that, you know. Make things are, sure things are cooked properly, thoroughly. Make sure you're washing your hands as often as you should, things like that. It only adds a tiny bit of time. You can literally use your dish liquid, like I did, to wash your hands. So you don't even need to leave the room and go to the bathroom and get hand soap. It works just fine. In fact, it's probably a better option because it'll probably be a lot better than most regular hand soaps in terms of killing germs. Other than that, you saw yourself. I didn't even use a measuring cup or measuring spoon at all. This was super easy, super simple. If you like yours a little bit spicier, go out and, you know, grab some cheap crushed red pepper or some, you know, add a bit of extra hot sauce, some chili powder. Easy to customize, easy to make, exactly the way you want them to taste. That said, I'm going to cut this video short now because, frankly, the smell is driving me and probably Trevor as well nuts. We're going to sit down and eat. And until next time, bon appetit.